This video is to demonstrate the basic use of the FDOT driveway subassemblies. To facilitate using the FDOT subassemblies, you need to insert the driveway dynamic block along the edge of pavement in your corridor model. You will find the driveway dynamic block in the list of blocks included in the FDOT stake kit. You will want to make sure to set the insertion point to specify on screen scale of 1, block unit inches with a factor of 1, and use uniform scale. Now place the block along the edge of pavement of your corridor model. This dynamic block has a list associated with it that allows you to specify the type of driveway based on the FDOT standard index. When you select a type, the block dimensions change to match that type. We will be using a Type 15 for this video. Once the driveway block dimensions are correct for the driveway you wish to model, you need to place some feature lines that will be targeted by the subassemblies. Naming these feature lines will make them easier to organize when you have multiple driveways in a project. Start placing a feature line at one end of the line indicating the back edge of the driveway slab. This line should span the entire back edge of the driveway slab as shown. Now you need to place a line indicating the width of the remaining slabs. In this example, that will only be the driveway daylight slab. This line should be drawn along the back edge of the driveway dynamic block. This leaves just one more feature line to be drawn. This feature line will indicate the extent of the drop curb for this driveway. This feature line is drawn spanning the gap between the lines in the driveway block indicating the transition from full curb to drop curb. You may now delete the driveway dynamic block. You now have the three feature lines your FDOT driveway subassemblies need to target. Now let's place the FDOT driveway subassemblies in our current assembly for this corridor model. You must begin this process by selecting the FDOT driveway slab 1 from the tool palette. Make sure the side parameter is set correctly for where you are placing the subassembly. Place the driveway slab subassembly at the top point on the back of curb. Complete the driveway by placing FDOT driveway slab 3. FDOT driveway slab 2 is only used if there is a sidewalk. Place slab 3 at the top point on the back of slab 1. Replace the simple daylight subassembly that was deleted when we started placing the driveway subassemblies. Having completed the placement of the subassemblies, let's move on to targeting. To begin this process, go to the tool space and right click on the alignment. Select the properties. In the corridor properties dialog, choose the target button to bring up the target interface. To start with, let's set all surface targets to the existing ground surface. Next, we're going to define the target line for the drop curb trigger. Make sure that you're looking for the one on the right and not the one on the left side. There will be one for both sides. Now we're going to use Feature Lines, Survey Features, and 3D Polylines. Select from Drawing. Click on the line that we drew earlier for the Drop Curb Trigger Line. Make sure that the name is correct in the box. If it is, select OK. Now move to the back of Slab 1 Offset Target. Again, select from Drawing, select the back of Slab 1 target line that we drew earlier, verify that it is the driveway slab target. You'll also need to do this for the elevation target for Slab 1 as well. Select from Drawing, select the exact same line again, hit Enter, 
check your name and make sure that it's correct and then click OK. After these two have been set, now we can move to the trigger slab 3 to draw a line. This line will actually cause slab 3 to be drawn in your corridor. Verify the name, click OK, and now you are done with all the targeting that is needed to make this driveway draw in your corridor model. Click on the button under the Frequency column to bring up the Frequency Line dialog box. In here we need to turn off the Adjacent to Offset Target setting. We need to make that No instead of Yes. We also are going to need to add a couple of lines for our driveway model. Click on Specify. Select the first vertex of the back of slab 1 target line and then select the second vertex. Click Enter. You will need to adjust both of these so that they are 0 .01 away from the current position that is noted by their station. Click OK. Click OK again. Select Rebuild the Corridor to rebuild the corridor so you can see your changes. To get a better idea of what has happened, let's use the Cross-Section Editor in order to get a side-on and top view of our corridor. In this current view, you can see that the driveway is being modeled incorrectly. The best way to get an idea as to what may be going on is to zoom in on the current station so that we can get some readings on the elevations. To view the elevations associated with this target line, let's use the Elevation Editor. Here you can see they're all the same elevation, which is of course not correct. The target line's beginning and ending elevation should be the same as back of curb, which is 751.13. Let's change this first entry to 751.13. With this correction made, we need to move on to the next critical point on this target line, which is the intersection here. This associates with this elevation, so what we need to do is move into that so we can see the elevation it should be. The elevation reading is 751.14. But you also have to take into account the fact that there's a slope going to the back of slab that is equivalent to 0.553. So we have to add that to the number, and that gives us 751.70. Moving on to the next critical point, we can see that the elevation should be based off of 751.59, plus the 0.553 for the rise in elevation to the back of the slab, which gives us 752153. And finally, the ending elevation should be equivalent to the back of curb elevation. 752.35 with all the elevations now correct, we can exit the editor and move on to rebuilding the corridor so that we can see the effects of our changes. As soon as the corridor finishes rebuilding, you'll notice that the entire corridor along this section is changed. The elevations of the ending points of the slabs of the driveway are now corrected and you see slab 3 being added and of the correct length in all of the sections that slab 3 should have been present in the previous run. You see all of the drop curb areas having an upward slope towards the back of the driveway and everything looks as it should. Your driveway is correctly modeled and ready for production. Thank you for viewing this video.